The Atlanta Braves may not have the impact prospects of Michael Harris, Vaughn Grissom, and Spencer Strider this year, but there are several prospects in camp that I think are intriguing to keep an eye on, and that includes Braden Shoemake, Dylan Dodd, and Jared Schuster, and how they might factor into the 2023 season. We'll discuss that on today's episode of Lockdown Braves, so let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Lockdown Braves, part of Lockdown Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Also, make sure you follow my web or go check out my website, shortstopball.com, where you can see some of my written work and other material. Make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at lockdown underscore brave. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. If you're new, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. We're up to almost 4,200 subscribers on YouTube right now. Make sure that you're watching this video. You hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment if you would as well. Let me know who, what prospect you are looking forward to seeing the most in spring training, which is what we'll be talking about today. And thanks as always for making Lockdown Braves your first listen of each and every day. We are back to posting episodes five days a week as we gear up for the 2023 season. As I mentioned on today's podcast, we're going to be looking at, or I'm going to be giving you my top five prospects that I will be keeping my eye on in spring training. They may not be the best prospects in the system, but they are prospects who I think could have an impact on the upcoming season. And I'm really curious to see what they show, how much of a look do they get, and could they perhaps have an impact on the 2023 season. And I want to start with Braden Shoemake. And it's a name that hasn't been talked about a lot this offseason, which is kind of a surprising considering he is a former first round pick, somebody who can play the shortstop position. There's really been no mention of Braden Shoemake becoming, you know, a possible solution at the Brave shortstop position, whether this time, this year or long term. It's all been about Von Grissom and understandably so. So, what is the role? for Braden Shoemake and the Braves did add him to the 40 man roster in the off season to protect him from the rule five draft. So that at least gives you a little indication of how the Braves view him. And obviously they don't just want to see a first round pick get taken up in the rule five draft like that. So it makes sense that they would protect him, but over three minor league seasons, he's slashing 259, 316, 408 with 172 strikeouts and 849 at bats he played 76 games at triple a last year slashed um 259 316 399 so right on his career marks just seven home runs 23 walks 57 strikeouts honestly it was a little bit all around better year for Braden shoemake than what we saw in 2021 at double a but he got injured in early august missed the rest of the season so it kind of halted what I wouldn't call it a breakout season, but I did think it was a step forward. Would have loved to seen more power, but he's not somebody that I always viewed as a big power potential type of prospect. More so, you know, his calling card at Texas A&M was the hit tool, and that's really not what we've seen in the minor minors from Braden Shoemake. What he has turned into is a pretty solid player defensively and somebody who can play all over the infield. And I never viewed him as an everyday guy even when they took him in the first round and i've mentioned this several times i was not high on that pick in the first round and i never viewed him as an everyday player but again if you listen to the podcast it was a gear up for the season one of my biggest concerns is middle infield depth and i do think he and i've always thought this he has the ability to become a solid you know utility bench depth type player and that's really what i want to see from Braden shoemake in spring training and throughout the 2023 season can he become that solid utility type guy and somebody who can provide depth in case of an injury you know and, and omar and fonti or, or martin prado type you know maybe not to that level those guys you know had years where they were 
everyday type players, but you know, somebody that you can have as depth to fill in for, for injuries. If Ozzy Smith or Ozzy Smith, if Ozzy Albies uh, goes down again, I just bought a brand new Ozzy Smith card. It is uh, behind me here. Uh, so got him on the brain a little bit, but if, you know, somebody on the infield gets injured, like we've talked about, you know, it's Orlando Arcia, assuming Von Grissom wins the shortstop job, you know, that's the backup. But behind him, there's just not much that you have confidence in at the higher levels. And so I'll be watching in spring training to see can Braden Shoemake do that? You know, is he, can he show, you know, solid defensive attributes at several infield positions? Do they move him around? Do they have him play some third base, some second base, uh, along, you know, as well as what I sh assume he'll be at shortstop the majority of the time? Does he continue to show strides at the plate? You know, play, better plate discipline, uh, more consistent, you know, hard contact. Again, not necessarily the power, but can he, you know, increase his doubles? Uh, can he can he hit the ball? You know, can he hit for average? Can he get on base at a, at a 320 clip? I mean, I'm not asking for much here. Again, I'm asking for, you know, a, a depth type player. Can he pass Adrianza? Can he pass Hechevarria? You know, can he pass Hoy Park for that infield depth? at the upper levels. That's really what I want to see from Braden Shoemake in spring training. Again, got hurt last year, so kind of cut his season short. Haven't really heard much about him other than he was added to the 40-man roster. So certainly somebody I want to keep my eye on. To a lesser degree, but in the same light, Cal Conley and Luke Waddell, two guys who I also feel like are more depth pieces, not everyday players, but I want to see what they can do in spring training and perhaps not out of the gate, but maybe later in the year they start to move up the chain for that middle infield depth, you know, bench utility type position. The Braves just need more of those guys and they need them from within. So I think it's big years for those guys, for Shoemake especially, but also, you know, Luke Waddell, Cal, Cal Conley, you know, guys who were drafted more recently to kind of co come up and continue to progress at the upper levels and show that they can be some of that or provide some depth at the middle or on the infield. And then next is Dylan Dodd, third round pick in 2021, lefty, big year last year, moved across three different levels, had a 336 ERA, a 1.18 whip, 142 or 153 strikeouts and 142 innings pitched. He's got a good bit of hype going into this season. You start listening to some of the other podcasts out there and Braves talent evaluators. A lot of people, you know, really kind of high on Dodd. I don't think anybody really views him as more than a, a mid rotation starter, but somebody who could be passing others on the starting rotation depth chart and, you know, good swing and miss stuff. I talked about this when I did my review of Dodd, you know, that slider, that change up gets a lot of whiffs. And then he has some good spin rates on that fastball as well to help those off-speed pitches play up. And our own Grant McCauley, I reached out to him before this podcast because I know he's down there in camp. And, and you know, he said that, uh, well, first he told me about Braden Shoemake, that he is indeed there because, like I said, we hear nothing on Braden Shoemake. But he also tweeted out that Dylan Dodd and Blake Burkhalter threw to Ron Acuna Jr. and Eddie Rosario on Sunday and he said the hitters had some trouble with Dylan Dodd. So, again, just kind of some glowing remarks there for Dylan Dodd against some major league hitters. So, can he pass Jared Schuster? Can he pass Bryce Elder? Maybe even Ian Anderson on the starting pitching depth chart. You know, is he the one that gets that first call if somebody gets injured? So, really looking forward to seeing what he can do in spring training. All right, I got three other that I three others that I want to get to, and then also get to some news, including an injury update on Mike Soroka. We'll get to that here next. It's the midway point of the NBA season, and now is the perfect time to download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. America's the number one sportsbook because new customers right now can go through the no sweat first bet promo to get $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drain. You can also get in on the upcoming Major League Baseball season as well. Plus, FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. 
So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Now, three more prospects that I'm really excited to see in spring training. Again, maybe not the best prospects overall, but prospects who I think could have an impact on the upcoming season. And next on that list, I mentioned him when talking about Dylan Dodd, and that is Jared Schuster. He's the a 25th overall pick in 2020. Some people have him as the top-ranked uh, prospect in the Brave system. He's also a lefty like Dylan Dodd. Was dominant at double A last year, where he spent the majority of the season a 278 ERA, a 0.96 whip with 106 strikeouts in 90 and two thirds innings. But then he struggled a little bit at triple A 48 and two thirds innings, just 39 strikeouts, a 425 ERA, and a 121 whip. So, kind of, you know, comes into the spring training into 2023 with a little bit of question. Was it more of what we saw at double A? Was it more of what we saw at triple A? Is it somewhere? In the middle, he does have a plus plus change up. I talked about that when I, you know, did his minor league review this past offseason. That change up is probably the best in the system and maybe one of the best secondary offerings of any Braves pitching prospect. Will he be the first one to get that spot start if needed, if if called up or somebody uh gets injured? You know, I think that's gonna be an interesting battle between Schuster and Dodd to see, you know, who kind of moves up the pecking order in the starting rotation. Look, you know, in any given season, a Major League Baseball team averages 11 start, using 11 starting pitchers. These guys are going to get used. So I'm really interested to see what both of them bring to the table in spring training if they impress enough, uh, if one of them impresses more than the other. And like I said, kind of moves up that depth chart. The Braves have a ton of starting pitching depth in my mind. And, you know, these are two guys who I think have the potential to come up and stick uh, if they, you know, pitch like they have at times at the minor league level. So really want to see what they can do in spring training. I think Schuster, you know, has the command and the maturity to be ready to fill in if needed. Uh, But want to see, you know, he can do in spring training if he gets a longer look. Uh, If he gets to start a game, you know, a lot of times these prospects, they're coming in after the guys on the big league roster have already started a game. Be really interesting to see if either Schuster or Dodd gets to actually start a game, perhaps in a split squad. They get to do that and go against some of the major league hitters from the other team. So those are the kind of things I'll be watching for with those guys in spring training. You know, unless there are several injuries, I don't think either of these guys, even if they pitch great, jump over the ones in front of them but you know who knows uh that's why it's spring training and that's why i'm interested to see what they can do now the next two on my list are both relievers we think uh one of those is blake burkhalter who i mentioned a minute ago grant said he threw to rosario and acuna on sunday and while he said dodd looked better of the two or at least got more swings and misses didn't say blake burkhalter burkhalter didn't look good 76 overall pick in last year's draft out of Auburn through just four and a third innings at single A last year, allowed just one hit, no walks, and seven strikeouts. And that's really what's intriguing about him is the command. He has a very good cutter uh, that is pretty filthy, right-handed pitcher. The thing to watch with Burke Halter is how are they going to develop him? They said coming out of the draft that they were going to give him an opportunity as a starter, but here they bring him into spring training camp, you know, less than a year later. I got to imagine they're looking at him as a reliever. Now, maybe they look at him as a reliever now, and then when the season starts, you know, they give him an opportunity in the rotation. Maybe he goes three, four innings, starts, because you kind of have to build that up regardless after pitching as a reliever all of last season, you know, for Auburn. Uh, where he threw 46 in a third innings, had 16 saves, which is really good at the college level, and had 71 strikeouts in those 46 in a third innings. So I'm interested to see with him, as I have been since they drafted him with the 76th overall pick, if they want to turn him into a reliever, this is a guy that I think could reach the big league club this year if needed. Now, the Braves bullpen, like the starting rotation, is very deep, so there's a possibility that you might not need him, but if needed and you wanted to use Burke Halter as a reliever, 
I mean, this is the guy who has the command, the control, and the stuff, I believe, to get major league hitters out right now. So really interested to see what they do do with Blake Burkhalter in spring training if they do you know, strictly look at him as a reliever or if they do give him the opportunity as a starter. So certainly want to see what happens there with him. And then lastly, Victor Vodnik. And again, another reliever who has the stuff and the potential to be an elite big league reliever, but hasn't been able to stay healthy, hasn't been able to improve his command. 2.93 ERA at AAA last year in 27 and a third innings with 33 strikeouts, but he had 16 walks leading to a whip of 1.52. So again, great stuff, closer type stuff if he were to ever you know completely put it together. But can he improve his command? That's something to be watching for in spring training. Can he stay healthy? Again, if so, I could see him being a big piece of the bullpen later in 2023 if needed. Again, same with Burkhalter. The bullpen is so deep, they'd be you know pretty far down the depth chart. But you know, that is the type of talent that both of these guys have, Burkhalter and Vodnik. So I'm sure they'll get the pitch you know, a good bit in spring training coming out of the bullpen. Maybe we'll get to see them against some major league talent earlier uh, in spring training, but really want to get my eyes on both of those guys. And for Burt Coulter, just see how they're going to treat him. Are they strictly going to use him as a reliever or a starter? And then Vodnik, can he command the stuff? Has he made improvements with his command? Uh, because if so, like I said, has the ability to impact a big league rotation this season. Next, I want to get to some news from a spring training from over the weekend, including a little bit of an injury scare with Mike Soroka, Michael Soroka already. Uh, we'll talk about that here next. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays. My goal, One of my goals was to eat healthier, and Built Bar has certainly helped me do that without having to compromise on the taste. With Built Bar, Healthy is actually tasty because they use a 100% real chocolate covered in all of their Built Bars. That's right, real chocolate. And they have unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, cookies and cream, which has always been my favorite and my go-to, but I like that peanut butter brownie as well. If you look at the macros for these Built Bars, and it will truly blow you away, 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now we've been telling you forever how you can go to Built.com to order you a box, which you still can. However, if you want to go out to your Walmart or your Sam's Club right now, you can go ahead and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can get a four-bar box at Walmart, a 13-bar box at Sam's. It might last you a couple of days. You get that 13-bar box. But go out to Walmart, go to Sam's Club, or as traditionally, go online, order yourself a, a box of Built Bars today. All right, it's going to be a big week on the podcast. I really appreciate you joining me uh, and, and listening and giving a listen as we get geared up for the regular season. It's going to be a lot of fun as we get ready for 2023, which I think is going to be just a big year for the Braves, a big year for the podcast. This week, we're going to be talking about team awards predictions. I'm going to go ahead and give you my award predictions for the team this week. And we're going to get into roster predictions as well as we gear up for spring training the end of this week, this coming up Saturday, we will have our first spring training game. So that's supposed to come later this week. So make sure that you are subscribed to Locked On Braves. Now, a little bit of news from over the weekend, a little bit of scary news. Mike Soroka slowed a bit by hamstring tightness. Now, anything going on with Mike Soroka right now, going to be a little dicey and make you worry a little bit just because of the injury history that he has, you know, even before all the Achilles stuff, you know, he was slowed coming into spring training one year because of some shoulder issues. And obviously, you know, the two Achilles injuries that he had. So not surprising just because, you know, hasn't pitched a lot, hasn't, you know, worked out at this level a lot in two and a half years. So not all that surprising Kind of like Acuna last year who just, you know, had these minor things come up here and there throughout the season that really slowed him down. 
again, not surprising that Soroka might have the same type of experience after not playing for a while and coming back. It had improved. I believe this was reported on Friday, and apparently it had improved enough on Saturday that he started playing catch again. Braves say they're being overly cautious here with Michael Soroka. Uh, and again, he wants to go by Michael now, not Mike. So that's going to take some time to adjust to. But he had improved enough that he was playing catch on Saturday. And there's still enough time for him to be on track for opening day. However, just because of this little bit of injury news, I'm kind of changing my tune a little bit about his ability to make the rotation out of spring training. And I'll talk about that more when I do my roster predictions later this week. But I just, and I've kind of been hinting at this a little bit the last week or so. I just feel like the smart route with Soroka might be to slow play him coming out of spring training. He's not going to throw 130 innings this year. I, I, I would almost be a little surprised if he throws more than 100 innings this year. So where do you want him to throw those innings? So we'll talk about that a little bit more later in the week when I do my roster predictions. But not the best start to spring training for Soroka, but glad that you know he is already back out there throwing, and I just want him so badly uh, to stay healthy and make that return. Speaking of injuries, Joe Jimenez had back surgery in October, said that he's pretty much already back to 100%, was able to start throwing in November as he normally does, but said that he did back out of the World Baseball Classic just to be careful to make sure that he's good to go for opening day for the Braves. So appreciate that. Hope you are sorry or that he wasn't able to participate in the World Baseball Classic, that he misses out on that. But Glad to hear that he is on track to recovery and should be go to spring, good to go for spring training. Not a big deal for relievers in spring training to hear about, you know, them being slowed, slowed down a little bit just because it doesn't take as long for them to get geared up for the season. David O'Brien on Twitter said that Anderson is working on a little slider. And that's what he quoted him as saying, working on a little slider, but it's still primarily fastball changeup. Now, this gives me a little bit of pause on Ian Anderson as well. Um, you know, the injury stuff on my, Michael Soroka gives me a little bit of pause. Hearing Ian Anderson say that he's still primarily fastball changeup gives me a little pause as well, just because it, it didn't work last year. And I don't know, I don't know what else he can do for his fastball changeup combination other than to just work on the command and location of those pitches a little bit more to improve on what we saw last year. It was pretty clear that hitters were beginning to figure out that two-pitch combination and been saying for a while he needs to develop a third pitch that he trusts. He's had that curveball, but he's never really trusted it enough. And certainly he's proven on the biggest stage at Major League level that that fastball changeup combination can get outs. But Hitters started to lay off that changeup. I mean, look, if it's up in the zone, it's a fastball. If it's down in the zone, it's a changeup. And hitters are going to adjust to that. If I can recognize that by now and I know, then hitters know that as well. And I think we saw them adjusting to that. So I think whether it's changing the location, the sequencing of that fastball changeup, maybe throwing more fastballs at the bottom of the zone, which could lead to him getting hit even harder. But it would at least keep the hitters off balance a little bit. Something has to change. Look, what he was doing last year wasn't working. So something has to change there. So it's a little worrisome for me to hear that nothing's really changed. But we'll see. Uh, give him the benefit of doubt. We'll see in spring training. Uh, but certainly would love to see him develop that third pitch. And then a little bit of news outside of the Braves. Robbie Grossman signed a two-year deal with the Rangers, a deal that can get up to $5 million as there's $3 million in incentives there. I know a lot of you were Hoping he would come back to the Braves. We kind of came kind of a fan favorite amongst the Braves last year. And I do agree. I like him switch hitter. Thought he played solid corner outfield defense. But I just think the outfield room is too big already. And even though I may, you know, like Grossman over some of those guys in there, um, just not the move that the Braves made. So wish all the best to Robbie Grossman. Maybe he gets straight for at the deadline again. Braves can acquire him that way. And then Fred McGriff will be going into the Hall of Fame without a team logo. So uh, interesting there. Kind of made sense for McGriff. He spent you know a good number of years for several different teams. Obviously would have loved him to go in as a Braves logo, but no logo for the crime dog. 
All right, a couple of comments here. I, I honestly did not mean to go live today. I was going to pre-record this and post it later, but here we are. Um, Jody has your girl says depth is my only worry for this season. Talent wise, we match up with any team out there. I would certainly agree with that for sure. And more so for in my mind, it's infield depth that worries me the most. Uh, Marianne Smith, please say Mike is Michael Marianne. You got to get that right. It's Michael uh, is not hurt bad. I'm looking for everyone to do super. Uh, but if someone is not sharp, I really hope uh, they can come into camp and work that out again. It sounds like they're being overly cautious with Soroka. ATL clutch says, I really hope Soroka will be ready to cut it loose opening weekend. Um, ATL clutch also said off topic strider, uh, Strider needs to hit Hoskins first chance to get his payback for that excessive bat slam. I don't, I don't see him taking uh, revenge on anybody. Look, I've said this, you know, I'm trying to put last year behind me, but he just wasn't himself in that game and certainly tired out. I think that pitch to Hoskins was 94 right down the middle. If Hoskins didn't do that with that pitch, then, you know, he should have been cut from the team. No great swing from him and uh, great at bat as well. You got to tip your hat to the Phillies. Uh, they really just worked over the Braves pitchers in that series, had some great swings. But I think Strider will go up there and strike him out, and that's how he'll get his reve revenge this coming season. All right, thanks for making Lockdown Braves your first listen every day. Again, we'll be back tomorrow doing it all over again uh, this week as we get geared up for spring training, spring training games again. Later this week, we'll have our first one, Braves and Red Sox, on Saturday. I think the first spring training game is actually on Friday. There's a couple of games and then, but the Braves starting things out on Saturday should be a lot of fun. So, again, we'll be back on Tuesday or Monday night if you're going to be watching live, going over the uh, team awards predictions for this season. All right, again, thanks for making Lockdown Braves your first listen. Now go make your second listen to Lockdown MLB Prospects podcast where host Lindsey Crosby talks about the brightest stars of tomorrow. Again, thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Lockdown underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Also make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Lockdown Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast, and we will talk to you next time.